Hello, and welcome to lecture three of Motion in a Plane in Phys 1104. In this lecture, we're going to learn more about doing vector algebra. A bit of this will be a review of things that you saw way back in unit one of the course, and I'll post a link to those videos. The first thing we need to do, though, is learn how to go back and forth between component form and magnitude direction form. So here is this vector, and I've imposed a grid on it, which has allowed me to write down that it is 4i hat plus 2j hat in meters. And you learned to do that way back in an earlier unit of the course, and so hopefully you can see that. If you don't, then go back and review that video lecture. In any case, this form of the vector is what we call component form. It's also sometimes called Cartesian form. But there's another way we can represent a vector. A vector has a length, or a size, which we call its magnitude. And it is also pointing in some direction. And you can define that direction in many ways, but a conventional way is to give the angle counterclockwise from the direction that the positive x-axis points in. And so once you have defined the length of a vector and the direction it points in terms of an angle, you can just write it down as a length or size and that angle. And this is called the magnitude direction form of the vector, and it's also often known as polar form. I'll just comment that if you remember all of your trigonometry, then you know exactly how I got the magnitude of A and that angle, theta. If you don't remember how to do that, don't worry, I'll show you in a few minutes. Here are a number of vectors, and we know them in component form. Now, some students seem to think that if you have a vector in component form, you need to find its magnitude and direction. Really, you don't. Unless there's some specific reason for needing the magnitude or direction, you might as well leave it in component form. Most of the time, component form is actually the most convenient form to have a vector in. However, sometimes you do need to know the magnitude and direction, so let's see how you do it. And it's just trig that you've probably learned before. So first I'm going to find A with no vector symbol. So remember that what we mean when we write the A with no ve vector symbol is that we want the magnitude of A. And you know how to do this because here's a triangle, and you know this side is 4 and this side is 5, and the magnitude of A is just the length of this side, and you've known Pythagorean theorem for years and years and years. Now, the other thing we need is an indication of direction, and the easiest thing is just to get this angle here because we usually state the direction of a vector in terms of its angle from the x-axis. So I'm going to call this theta a, the angle for the vector a. And what we know is that tan of theta a is the opposite over the adjacent. So that would be a y, the y component, over a x. There we go. And so that tells us that we can find theta a just from the inverse tan of ay over ax. And so that's 5 over 4, where those are both in meters, so the meters are going to cancel and I don't need to worry about them. And that's about 51.3 degrees. Let me just do that again with b. And then I'll define theta b to be here. So by convention, angles counterclockwise from the x direction are positive, and so this will be a negative angle by convention. And we're all done. Now we know both of these vectors in terms of their magnitudes and directions. Now let's go the other way. Let's start with a vector that's in magnitude direction form, and let's get it in component form. So let's say there's a football here. Uh, actually, the way I've drawn it, it looks more like a lemon. So let's go with that. Someone's throwing lemons. 
So here's a lemon that somebody's thrown and it has a speed. Note I didn't put a vector symbol here, right? This is a speed. It's going 15 meters per second and it's directed 30 degrees from the vertical. So we could write the v vector, the velocity in either of these ways, say, and a variety of other ways. And let's convert that over to component form. So the first thing to do is just draw a little more. Before you do trigonometry, you should know what the triangle is that you're talking about. Never do trigonometry without drawing the triangle. So here is V, and here are its components. And we want to know Vx and Vy, and we know that this is 30 degrees, and we know that this is 15 meters per second. So we can just do usual trigonometry, Vx over V, that is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and so that's a sign of the angle we're talking about, so 30 degrees, right? And so Vx is V sine 30 degrees, So that is 7.5. Similarly, you can see that Vy must be V times cosine of 30 degrees, more or less 13. Okay, and there. So to go from magnitude direction to component form, just draw the triangle and do the trig. So let me remind you that the vector is the arrow. The components don't define the vector, nor does the direction, because we can define a new set of axes oriented, say, at 45 degrees to the original ones, and now this vector is at a different angle from those axes. Now its magnitude hasn't changed, but to describe the direction that this vector points in, we now have to come up with a new angle. Well, you can see from the 45 degrees and that the original angle from the original x-axis was 26.6 degrees, that this is now 18.4 degrees below that new x-axis and we could now use the procedures we just found to find the new components of this vector in this new coordinate system. But it's the same vector. We're just expressing it with reference to a new set of axes. Okay, the camera pans back to reveal that the lemon thrower was standing on the side of this hill with a 20 degree grade. And so now let's find the velocity vector again, but it might be convenient to work in axes that are referred to the hill. So just for sake of argument, I'm going to put my x-axis pointing downhill because I'm allowed to do such things. And let's go and find the vector in these coordinates. Because now if you think through the geometry of this, here's, here's a perpendicular to the hill and the thing to notice is that this angle in here is 20 degrees. And that's that gray line there is parallel with the y-axis. And so our v, if we slide our v over to where the axes are and do that geometry, we see that this angle here is 50 degrees. And so now in our new coordinate system, we've got this situation. There's our V, here's our Vx, here's our Vy, and this is 50 degrees. And so we can do it all again, and I'm just going to take a slight pause to do that. Okay, so I've carried out the trig, and I've actually deliberately made an error, because look, Vy, Vy is fine, but look at this Vx, and compare that vector with these axes. Its x component is back 
in the negative x direction. So I better be careful here. I should now write this as negative 11.5 meters per second i plus 9.6 meters per second j, where now under these axes my i points this way and my j points this way.